How would you feel when my videos would have static noise like you hear right now? Or if you would hear someone destroying their keyboard while I'm talking? Or when my audio would be too quiet when I'm not talking loud and too loud when I'm shouting? Removing all these flaws from your audio can all be done with microphone filters directly in OBS Studio and it will make your audio a lot more professional. So that's what we are going to do right now. What's up everyone, Yell here and welcome to the OBS Studio Master Course playlist. This is a whole playlist about OBS Studio where I will show you everything you need to know about the program as a streamer. Basically it's just a free course, the link will be in the cards and on top of the description. And if you want to talk to me on stream you can follow me on Twitch because I stream two times each week there. I will also link my channel in the description so you can give me a follow if you want. I would love it if you would come say hi. And something else I would love is you checking out our sponsor for today's video which is OwnTotTV. No more trying to make your own stream graphics or to customize a free one to make it somewhat great it's time for professional stream branding and onto tv has the biggest graphic shop on the internet and their graphics are very versatile you can buy a pack and customize the way it looks on your own stream so that yours looks different from that of someone else who bought the same pack they have a very good customer service and overall it's just a good company so if you're looking for stream graphics then buying from onto tv honestly will be the right decision Check them out, their graphics look great, the link is in the description. So let's start with quickly adding your microphone to OBS Studio. Make sure you run it as administrator and then go to the settings. Go to the audio tab and right here under mic auxiliary audio you should add your microphone. I will choose this device since that's my audio interface and then on top the desktop audio will be set to default and most of the time that works. So then let's click on OK and on the bottom you can see the mixer window and this is where you can control the volume of your desktop audio and your microphone which we just added. First of all let's enable audio monitoring for your microphone so you can hear it. That will help you to actually hear the effects of the filters that you're applying. So click on the settings icon for any of these sources and then open the advanced audio properties. On the row of your microphone, open the audio monitoring drop down and then choose monitor and output. Now you will be able to hear your microphone, so let's set it up. We'll start with removing static noise from your microphone. That noise could be coming directly from the microphone because of a low quality connection or something of that sort, but it also could be because of a loud computer fan in the background that's making a continuous buzzing sound. Removing that is extremely easy, just click on the settings icon of the microphone source and choose filters. Then click on the plus icon on the bottom left and add a noise suppression filter. Now you can just play with this slider to test what works. So once you did that and the constant noise is gone, it's time to fix the second issue and that will be your keyboard sound. Depending on which microphone you have, there is a big chance that you will hear your keyboard in the background. We can't fix this completely but we can mute your keyboard while you are not talking by adding a noise gate. So what this will do is mute in your microphone unless the incoming sound is above a certain amount of decibels. So when you are not talking and you're only using your keyboard, then the sound that your keyboard makes will not be loud enough to actually trigger the noise gate and activate your microphone. But then when you start talking into the microphone, the sound that's coming into the microphone will be loud enough to actually trigger the noise gate and then your microphone will activate and it will start picking up all sounds. But remember that I'm saying all sounds. You can mute your keyboard when you're just using the keyboard without talking, then people will just hear nothing, the microphone will be muted, but then when you start talking, your microphone will just activate so when you're talking you will also hear your keyboard on the same volume. And then when you stop talking, the microphone will completely mute and the keyboard sound will also fall away. And there are two ways to add this noise gate or to add this same effect. 
One way is an actual noise gate filter and then the second way is with an expander filter. And let's add a noise gate first. So just click on OK and that will show you some settings. Move both sliders completely to the left and move the settings window so you can see your mixer on the bottom to see when your microphone triggers and when it's muted. So if you turn on your audio monitoring then you can also just listen when it triggers. So because we moved both sliders completely to the left your microphone will be picking up all sounds including your keyboard sound when you're not talking. Now move the open threshold slider to the right while constantly pressing keys on your keyboard and keep doing this till the microphone levels in the mixer are not moving anymore. At this point your keyboard sound is not loud enough to trigger the microphone. Then when you start talking you should see that the microphone will start picking up sounds and the levels will be moving. Play a bit with the slider till you find the sweet spot between the keyboard sound not triggering it and your voice triggering it. And then when you found the sweet spot set the closed threshold slider at 6 decibels lower than the open threshold. So this is the first way and this is a harsh way of doing it. Why? Well this filter completely shuts down your microphone when you don't talk. So when you start talking you will hear your mic unmuting and then when you stop talking you can hear the mic muting again and completely shutting down any sound. Some people like this first way so the noise gate which we just set up they like this better because it completely mutes your microphone so you don't hear anything in the background when you're not talking. But some people like a more smooth way of doing this and that's the second way and that's a softer way and it's with the expander. So let's set this up. Remove this noise gate and then add a new expander filter. Move this ratio slider to something like 3 to 1 and then test it by clicking your keyboard keys and hearing how loud they are. You will still hear them very quiet but it won't be very noticeable when your music is playing. So then start talking while clicking your keyboard and then stop talking without stopping your keyboard clicking. If it works as it should, you will hear the keyboard sound going down a lot immediately after you stop talking. So you can choose for yourself if you want to use the harsh noise gate or this soft expander. If you use this expander, you don't need the noise reduction filter because the expander does that too. The downside of the expander is that it doesn't completely mute your mic unlike the noise gate. So either you use the noise gate plus the noise suppression filter or you just use the expander filter. I will delete the noise reduction and the noise gate filter and then keep the expander. You can choose what you want. And again, because I got this reaction a lot on other videos, people will still hear your keyboard while you are talking. These filters are used to mute everything when you don't talk. It doesn't magically remove your background sound at all times. It only mutes your microphone when you're not talking, so you will still hear your keyboard while you talk. The only way to reduce your keyboard sound while you're talking is moving the microphone as far away from the keyboard and as close to your mouth as you can. And of course another way is buying a better microphone like this Rode Procaster for example because this only picks up noise that's in front of the microphone. So when I position it like this and my keyboard is below the microphone you almost can't hear my keyboard even without an expander or a noise gate. You should look for this while you're buying your microphone because there are expensive microphones that also pick up sound around the microphone. So just look that up. The next filter is also a quick and easy one and it's the limiter. So what this does is very simple, it just limits your audio so it can go above a certain threshold. Watch this, I will disable the limiter filter and then shout into my microphone. So you see that it's going into the red, right? And just going a bit into the right wouldn't be a problem, but it completely caps and that will hurt your viewers ears. So right now I will enable this limiter and then shout again and as you can see right now it doesn't cap. This is just a safety measure but it's quick and easy so just add a limiter. 
and make sure you always position your limiter at the bottom of these filters because they work as a chain. The top one gets applied first and then the bottom one gets applied last. So the limiter should be the last filter that's being applied to protect viewers from all the previous filters and yourself shouting. And you will need to do a little adjustment to the limiter, but you need to do it after everything has been set up because some filters will add gain or remove gain from your microphone so then the limiter isn't set up exactly right anymore so after we set up everything i will go back to the limiter and we will adjust it so it works just fine so then the next filter is the invert polarity filter and you will not need this so i will not go into detail here Another filter we can skip is the gain filter. It is useful to boost the volume of your microphone sound, but we will be adding a compressor and we can also add gain with that, so we don't need the simple gain filter. And before adding a compressor, make sure that your microphone's volume is not reduced in the window settings. So right click on your window sound icon and go to the sound settings. Make sure your microphone is selected right here and then click on device properties. Move this slider to 100 right here if it isn't and then secondly go to OBS Studio, go to the advanced audio properties and make sure that your microphone's volume is not below 0 decibels. So right now let's go back to the microphone filters and then add a compressor filter. Set the ratio to 3 to 1, the threshold to minus 20 decibels the attack to 1 millisecond and then the release to 50 milliseconds. So these settings will work for most people but as an effect of this your output volume will probably have become more quiet. So you need to counter that by adjusting the output gain till your sound goes into the middle of the yellow area when you're just talking like you would be on stream. So once we did that what happens now is when you start to talk louder, when you get excited or when you're raging, the compressor will adjust your microphone volume to make sure that you don't go completely into the red to make sure that your voice stays somewhat in the yellow area and this is very useful. However, if you shout very loud in your microphone, you will still be able to make it peak completely into the red. So you need to counter that by just adding a simple limiter and we already added one before, but since we added gain right here in the compressor like I told you, the limiter settings will probably need to be changed. So just test this for yourself, add a limiter to the end of this filter chain and then shout very loud into your microphone to see if the audio is speaking completely into the red or not. If it is, then adjust the limiter and test again and keep doing that till the absolute maximum volume is just a little bit into the red but mostly your voice will always be into the yellow and that's the sweet spot which you're looking for. This compressor filter is very important to protect your viewers so make sure you set it up. So these were a lot of settings to set up but the audio settings are really important for your stream. If you want to come talk to me on stream you can follow me on Twitch, I stream two times each week and I will link my Twitch channel in the description. I would love it if you would just come say hi. If you need any more information on OBS Studio then go to the playlist as more and more videos are being added and every time something changes the video on that topic in the playlist will get replaced with an up to date one. If you want information on OBS Studio click on the thumbnail. I will see you in that playlist.